Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my overall thoughts on the Righteous Fire Inquisitor build. Uh, we have successfully mapped our way to level 100 farming ports. Um, just to give you guys an idea of some of the stuff I acquired farming my ports. Uh, we've found 189 Saints Treasure. I think it was like from 87, sorry, 97 to 100. I did farm with uh, another player, so that was my buddy Aka, and we run no quantity gear whatsoever. So before I get started on any of that, it's not like a currency video, I'm just going to run a really standard bear um, tier 16 map to just give you guys an idea of what the character looks like. Of course, you could look at like the juicing video I released a few days ago, but we'll just do this for now, and then I'll go ahead and talk about the character. So... <clears throat> While I'm mapping, there's also a common complaint I have noticed uh, kind of pop up around my YouTube, which the number one thing is, why is my content behind a paywall? Why is my, or why are my Twitch VODs on sub only? Well, the reason why my Twitch content is on subscription only has nothing to do with me trying to monetize my channel more and has everything to do with the fact that DMCA false claims are, or false claim DMCA is a very rampant thing that occurs on Twitch. And I just simply don't want to put my content at risk for, you know, virtually no reason. Um, you know, all the POBs are free. My YouTube is completely free. There's no like subscription benefit. You can come on my Twitch, ask me any question you'd like. So, you know, there's a reason why I have my, uh, my content on sub only, sadly, just because I don't want to get a copyright strike for music that is totally allowed just because I get a hundred false claim bots just to spam report because that's what happened in the past. I also do have to say, I am so much more impressed with this build from last league considering I made it to level 100 with a death's rush and a replica at Zuri's foible. Not that you should be using a replica at Zuri's foible necessarily. Um, it is a good piece of gear to use, but it offers you pretty much no damage. And I know a big issue a lot of players have is damage, especially in softcore. So I'll explain my itemization choice in a little bit once we finish with this map. I'm back. Oh, I should have taken Scarab there. That was a mistake. Okay, so that's pretty much the character. So, um, the first thing I want to state and bring attention to, since I'm about to flashbang you guys, is do not forget, if you want the updated build guide, go ahead and take the League Start Leveling RF 3.17. This is 100% up to date. Of course, if you want this exact character, you can just import profile pox and it will give it to you. I don't like posting straggler POBs on my YouTube channel because then new players take them, think it's the guide, and then they get confused. Um, so that's pretty much that. Also, do not follow the explode setup unless you're actually playing the explode setup that uses Assonance Gentle Touch. It is a different version than what I'm playing and we're probably gonna remove this because I've just had a bunch of people who take this POB because they see it's expensive instead of this, and then they get confused and go, where's the guide? I don't really see it. So uh, some people are making it a little difficult to try to give all the information. All right, so yeah, let's talk about this league compared to last league. So one of the big things that happened with RF in this league specifically uh, were two, actually two big things. So number one, we gained access to Legacy of Fury boots, which are from Maven. And they're the things that basically allow you to reach an elevated level of clear compared to normal RF um, without having to like do a bunch of shit. You basically just put on the boots and you automatically scorch. And when you kill mobs that are scorched, they have a chance to uh, create this like uh, this burn, this really, really heavy burn uh, that looks like the Herald of Ash explosion. So these are probably like one of the biggest, pro no, probably, yeah, the biggest stepping stone to acquiring decent clear on righteous fire and a big damage increase so i really like that the second thing was it is now easier to find shields that look like this 
Granted, when I bought this shield, it was 1.5 exalt, and then people saw what I was buying, and then it went up to 10 exalt, but you don't need an influence shield to get a 2 max all res, 3 max fire res shield. So if you look at my gearing, you'll notice I have done something a little bit different, right? And I, it's not that I'm not following my own guide, it's that I can make my own decisions and change things based off what I would like. So since I was running, you know, 20% Delirium, Tier 16 content, um, you know, beyond just a bunch of shit on these port maps, I want it to be like a wall, right? I want it to be a wall because when you have two frames per second playing Path of Exile in Tier 16 content, because you hit a Delirium Mirror inside a Breach while Abyss is going and Jun's boys start to invade you, you gotta be thick, man. You don't wanna die leveling to 100, right? So the reason why I opted out for like a purely defensive shield and something like a replica at Zeri's Foible was mainly because my goal was leveling to 100. Now that I'm done leveling to 100, I'm most likely making a second Righteous Fire build and I'm going to remove the Cluster Jewel here and I'm just going to go with Exposure on Hit on my Gloves because when you're bossing, if you hit a target with anything that applies Fire Exposure and you have this node here, it's automatically 18% exposure. Now granted, that's not the same as map clearing where you have, you are literally the master of fire and mobs around you have fire exposure. But for bossing, you know, just frost blinking on top of my target should be more than enough um, with the occasional shield charge and molten shell hitting him to keep up the exposure. So that'll chop a lot of points. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going. I may come back up here for damage. Uh, I may come like over here to grab like Art of the Gladiator and Bravery. Uh, I may come up here to go grab the life. I'm not really sure I'll have to go POB that. Uh, one of the other things is Death's Rush, man. Death's Rush is like my favorite ring. Uh, I got all the way to level 100 with it. Was pretty happy with it. And I even saved the second one just because of how much I really liked it. So Death's Rush is just... It's not BIS by any means. It's just the only way I'd see myself dropping Death's Rush is if I acquired Onslaught from my Brutal Restraint. But that was just a lot of work. I went through maybe 40 Divines and only hit Onslaught two times. And the other Notables were not really very good. So, like, my current Brutal Restraint is 10% Flash Charges gained, 20% Ellie damage, 20% Ellie damage, which now already turns this into, like, what? Like a 43 Dexterity, 40% Ellie damage jewel. Um, along with another 5% Dexterity. Uh, global accuracy doesn't matter and then there's like five percent dex here dex here this has proj damage and this has flash charges gain so just overall i was very happy uh with the death's rush setup obviously if you're bossing you don't really need onslaught so that's another ring that really can be replaced so that's really nice um you can definitely get a ton of damage bossing uh by swapping like death's rush and removing this cluster setup uh, my amulet, replica at Zeri's foible. The reason why I used it is, for the most part, I had no increased life regen on any of my gear. Uh, at level 99, I ended up buying these gloves, which did have a 17% life regen rate, so that was pretty good. Overall, this puts me to a whopping 2,000 life regen per second while walking. I if I get hit, I get another 2% because of my Legacy of Fury. And then if I have a flask on, I go up to 2.3, so... It's like 2.5k HP per second while mapping and ES per second, uh, which was pretty solid. I never ended up using a Vol Righteous Fire. Um, I basically double corrupted. I double corrupted. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think it was like 14. These are another set of double corrupts. But so I, I double corrupted 14 Righteous Fires to hit a 2120 Vol RF. Never hit it. Um, the reason why I don't use a 2020 Vol RF is... 21 RF just does more damage. So that's really the only reason I went with this. Um, other changes from last league were basically the, uh, the, the chess piece craft. I was a big fan of the chess piece craft. I really liked it. I fucked up on a few occasions. So like number one, uh, it's item level 73, which is deterring me from sinking more currency into it. But anyway, the implicit that you see the two max fire res there, you could actually get a two max all res. The reason why I didn't mess with it anymore is what I was doing is if you look at my prefixes, I have the Atzawaddle mod, whatever it's called, the basically the flat life percent life, then the gain life is ES, which is through Jun, 
and then another Master Crafting mod, which was basically up to 7% life. And then I was re-rolling my suffixes with the new currency, because the new currency is over here. So if Searing Exarch is dominant, re-roll prefix. If Eater of Worlds is dominant, re-roll suffix. So basically, the, uh, the thing was, I bought a temple base. So the temple base looked exactly like this. Where'd it go? I lost it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so I bought a temple base like this, right? Then from here, I regaled it. If I hit a suffix, <clears throat> then I went over here. And I did, can I have additional modifiers? Then I crafted my two prefixes. Then after I crafted my two prefixes, I went over here, right? And I used the... Uh, well, let me just confirm. Let me confirm this so I don't mess you guys up. If Eater of Worlds is dominant, reroll suffix. Right. So you use a Grand Eldritch Iker, because, or Iker, because these are the Eater of Worlds. You put it on your gear. If you want to be extra safe, you can put like a lesser one with a, gra with a grand one, and that should work too. People told me it works just by itself. I just haven't tried it. Then you use your Eldritch Chaos Orbs, and that rerolls your suffixes. So that's why I didn't get perfect implicits, because I was still rerolling suffixes. But 44 Cold Res and 23 Lightning, good enough for me. You know, naturally, if I hit like Chaos Resist, Life Regeneration, Physical Damage Reduction, that would be sick, but that's not really happening. Um, yeah, other than that... I don't really think there were any changes to the tree. Uh, I think I'm pretty much following my tree verbatim to the guide I posted. So pretty happy about that. There wasn't really anything to do there. Um, you know, when I got my Enlightened, I did drop the Determination Mastery. So we gained a point there. But other than that, everything is pretty much the same. I think the only thing I don't like on my tree is just one point, which is Fire Mastery. Um not really very consistent for mapping it was not bad like i'll give you an example you charge into a shrine and there's like a really tanky uh katava soul eater and he just eats like 400 souls and he punches you and he automatically gets you know covered in ash so because he'll hit like literally 20 times a second this is like the only time i really saw this being useful uh in like actual bossing encounters a lot of the times you're not face tanking you're like dodging so it's not as good um but yeah this is pretty much about it So that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hover over my gear so you can kind of see everything. My weapon really didn't even end up being that good. I mean, it, I identified this weapon, I think, in low tier maps and used it all the way to 100. Now, naturally, if I equipped a better weapon, I would literally get like 20% more damage, but that didn't end up being the case. So I'm just going to finalize by, again, going over all my gear. And then I'm going to uh, touch up and go over my gem links one last time, basically. Okay, so uh, we've got faster attacks, life tap, and shield charge. This is our main source of mobility, how I like to move around. Then we've got the Righteous Fire Links, which is Awaken Ink AoE, Awaken Swift Affliction, Righteous Fire Life Tap. I was told that Empower Ellie Focus, I think, is actually better than Life Tap Swift Affliction. But Empower 4 is kind of expensive, and I didn't really care to do that upgrade. You would get a little bit of AoE, so that is kind of just like an FYI, since Trap and Mind Damage only takes 70 Dexterity. You would actually possibly save a ton of Dexterity doing that. Um, yeah, but that, that's just something to maybe think of. That again was Awaken Ink AoE, Awaken Swift Affliction, Righteous Fire Life Tap. Uh, over in my shield, I've got Molten Shell, Enduring Cry, Defiance Banner. In my boots, I've got Life Tap, Hex Touch, Flammability, Divergent, Frost Blink. Uh, my gloves, I've got Anomalous, Purity of Elements, Determination, Malevolence, Enlighten. And then in the chest piece, we've got Fire Trap, Burning Damage, Awaken Control Destruction, Awaken Deli Focus, Life Tap, Trap in Mind. I would get so much damage replacing this with Awaken Burn. And you do get more damage if you use Awaken Swift Affliction over Ellie Focus. But I don't like having a very small duration of Burning Ground. 
my burning ground right now is 2.24 with awakened swift affliction it's like 1.5 and that just feels really low for me so i'm just kind of sticking with it like this for now anyway that's pretty much about it hope you guys enjoyed the guide um you know i'm pretty happy with the character i'm really happy we hit level 100 so early on in the league uh, deaths i know people ask about this a lot I would say half of my deaths were due to bossing blind, as you guys saw me raging in some of the stream clips. Um, then I would say another five deaths were from like my friend PKing me slash me reading chat. So that leaves about five natural deaths that occurred, like that basically, you know, getting one shot mapping extreme scenarios. So very smooth mapper, pretty much all the way to 100. Really didn't have much issues at all. I think the only thing left for me to do is uh, the feared. That said, I didn't really bother doing the feared um, when I was leveling from 98 to 100 because I, you know, kind of just wanted to level. But, uh, yeah, all I have to do is... So many hockeys now. There we go. I just have to do the feared. And the last thing to do is uh, Doriani's Machinerum. And then my Atlas is completely done. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.